Hello Year 3 and welcome to the latest video explaining your home learning. This is for the home learning of the week of the 15th of June and I hope it finds you safe and well. I'm about to talk you through each of the activities. Have a look at the timetable. Remember the timetable is optional. It just gives you a few suggestions of the kinds of things you might do each day and how long to spend on them. So let's get started with the first set of activities. I'm now going to talk you through the reading activities for this week. We're going to be using BBC Bite Size. All you need to do is click on the link. All of the materials that are here are um, available also to download directly from our website or you collect a pre-made pack of activity sheets from the school office as always. So this week is all about inference and being a reading detective. We'd like you to do a different activity each day. So on Monday, we'd like you to read down through here and watch this introductory video. And then we'd like you to complete activity number one. So for activity one, we have a series of eight pictures that we'd like you to look at. And for each one, there are four questions. I'm going to read you through the first one as an example. Have a look here at this girl with tears rolling down her face. Question one says, describe what is happening in the picture. So I would say, I can see a girl. She has tears rolling down her face or she's crying. Her mouth is open wide. She has pink cheeks and her eyes are closed. She's standing in a room with a table and on that table is a doll and it looks like the doll is broken. Question two says, how does the person feel? And question three is, why do, they, why do they feel like that? Well, seeing somebody with their mouth wide open, eyes screwed shut, pink cheeks and tears, they could be laughing or they could be crying. Well, I think she's crying and I think she's upset. Why do I think that? Well, the tears rolling down her cheeks and her mouth open wide suggest that she's upset. How do I know is question four. Well, the doll is broken on the table. So when we're looking for the clues that suggest how she feels. The reason I don't think she's laughing is there's nothing in the room to suggest she's laughing. Although her face could be laughing, I think on balance, because of the broken doll, she must be crying and upset. So you now need to repeat that process for each of these eight pictures. On Tuesday, we'd like you to scroll down to activity number two. In activity number two, you're going to watch part one of a video called Tiddilik the Frog. Watch the story and then you're going to be looking for evidence that infers something about the character. Here's the evidence on this side, and in orange is the inference. The first one's been done for you. Tidilic drank up all the water in the stream and didn't care that, that was, there was no water left. What does this infer about the character? This shows that Tidilic does not think about anyone else but himself as he took all the water. He's selfish and was just happy that he felt better. You need to repeat this process for each piece of evidence about Tiddalik. What does it suggest or infer about that character? And you need to write those down. There is an extra challenge at the bottom for you to complete as well if you feel you have time. Activity three is a two day challenge for Wednesday and Thursday. We'd like you to spend a little bit longer on this one. It says create a poster showing what Tiddalik is like in the part in this part of the story. If you wish you can use the outline drawing of Tiddalik if you have a printer or if you pick up a pack from school. So there's Tiddalik and you can use the outline to help you to create your poster. The important thing about the poster is that you are showing what you know about Tiddalik and what clues there are inferred. So it gives you a list of things to include in your poster. But to help you out we've given you a suggestion of what the poster could look like. 
for a different character. Here's the character of Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk, who you should know very well. So have a look at this as an example, and it will give you some ideas of the kinds of things that you could put about Tiddlick. Spend two days making your poster both attractive and detailed. On the Friday, as usual, we would like you to go to the Oxford Owls website. And here you can browse down through and find some books that are right for you. If you go to the age 7 to 9 and click on here and go to your Oxford level, you can decide which Oxford level you, would, you are on. Find your Oxford level. It will then show you the books for that level and you can then choose the book you'd like to read. You will need to log in in order to do this, so ask your parents to help you to create your account. If you haven't created an account yet, you just simply click here and ask your parents to set up that account, clicking on parent and filling in your details and you can go back and use this free resource as often as you like. So that is the plan for your reading for this week. Your writing this week is inspired by a Disney short film called A Cloudy Lesson. Just a word of warning, the first activity requires you to watch the video in small pieces and pause the video at certain times in order to discuss questions about that video. If you watch the whole video first before pausing and watch, answering the questions, you will spoil the opportunity for the learning. So the video starts like this. And then your first pause comes here. If I now take you to the activity sheet, you can see that in the first activity it asks you to pause the film in various stages and ask questions. For example, at this first pause the question is, what is strange about this house? You'll notice various pause points through the questioning. So please try to pause at each point and discuss the questions with an adult at home before you move on. Once you get to the end of the film, of course, it's fine to you, for you to watch it several times. On Tuesday, we'd like you to complete the Keep Your Eyes Open activity. The film contains a man and a boy. So we'd like you to go through and each time you think one of the characters experiences one of these emotions or attitudes, we'd like you to indicate it on the sheet, either with a tick or if you want, you could label M for man and B for boy. You'll need to watch the video several times to capture all of the responses. And for the rest of the week, we would like you then to start to write a diary. The diary entry is from the point of view of the boy. We've given you a whole series of questions to help you with your plan so respond to each question in your planning notes. And then on the following day, you can start to write your diary here. You'll notice we've included a word bank for the man and for the clouds. On Friday, you have the option of either performing your diary by sharing it with somebody in your family, or if you wish, you can complete this cloudy lesson comic strip. So enjoy your writing opportunity for this week. Your grammar for this week is using the BBC Bite Size website to revise apostrophes in contractions. You have a short video here which will remind you of how they work. Remember that apostrophes for contractions involve shortening usually two words into one, replacing some letters with an apostrophe. She will becomes she'll, you are becomes your. In situations like will not becoming won't, you might have to reorganise or reposition some of the letters. Then your first activity is an interactive one. And then your second activity involves you watching a short video about the scientist Marie Curie. And then we'd like you please to contract down the bold words in each of these five sentences. Your final activity for grammar this week is to write your own five sentences inspired by the story of Marie Curie, making sure there's at least one contraction in each sentence. To support you, 
there is this contractions word mat. Good luck with your grammar for this week. Your spellings this week are all words ending with the suffix al. Remember that a suffix is a letter or letters added to the end of a word which can change the meaning of the word. So for example if adding al to these words person becomes personal, accident becomes accidental and nation becomes national. They all change into adjectives. But what about the spelling? Well, when changing sensation to sensational or medic to medical, the root word ends with a consonant. So it seems simple, you just add al to the end. But what do you do if the root word ends in a vowel, a e i o u? Here, nature ends with e. So what you have to do is remove that vowel and add al. Nature becomes natural. You're then going to practice by playing some prefix hangman games. We've played these before, you know how they work. You select a letter. If it's in the word, it will be placed on a line. If it's not in, a wo in the word, then it simply disappears and you must click oh no to start to build up the character. See if you can guess all the letters before the hangman is complete. As well as working your way through the PowerPoint, we also have a range of the usual activities for you to do. So there is, of course, the word search for you to complete. The look, say, cover right check, where you can practice those words. You've also got a spelling crossword this week. We have played the crosswords before. You have to go down to the clues below. Each clue contains a missing word, which is one of your spellings. Place them onto the crossword grid to complete it. You have, of course, got the usual handwriting practice too. On the Friday, we've asked if you could have a look at one of Mrs. Matthias's videos that she's put on our YouTube channel. This time it's the multi-sensory spelling one. She shows you lots of different ways of practicing your spelling words. Here you can see her using rainbow writing, writing over the same word again and again, changing colors each time, or you could use a different color for each letter. If you haven't got chalks, you can try it using coloring pens or pencils on a piece of paper. Watch that video because it will give you lots more ideas of ways of practicing your spellings. So work hard with all your spellings this week. For maths this week, we'd like you to continue with the Times Tables Rock Stars and your Hit the Button. We have set up new challenges on Times Tables Rock Stars this week. There will be battles between each of the Year 3 classes. So Moore versus Potter, Moore versus Shaman, and Potter versus Shaman, and they'll be running for the whole school week, finishing at quarter past three on the Friday. So see how many points you can earn for your team. Your daily maths involves using a different BBC Bite Size day, starting on the 1st of June and going through to the 5th of June. And everything this week is based around fractions. So your fractions on Monday is fractions on a number line. And as always, you go down through the daily lesson, you learn and follow the instructions, either using the instructions on the screen or watching the video if you can. And then you have some practice activities to apply that knowledge. As always, the activities are available for you to download directly from our school website as well, or you can collect a pack from the school office. Tuesday is looking at marking fractions on a number line above the number one. On Wednesday, you're finding fractions of an amount. On Thursday, you're using non-unit fractions of an amount. 
so there's a video for you to watch on that one. What we mean by non-unit fraction might be something like two-thirds or three-quarters. And as always, on the Friday, you get to have a go at the weekly challenges. And there are four challenges each week of um, using a mixed range of maths for you to try. So have fun with your daily maths this week. For your geography this week, we are going to continue to sharpen up your geography skills with a particular focus upon maps. The first lesson is an introduction to maps using the BBC Bite Size. There is a video for you to watch with the character Sue Vanier. Some explanations about what a map is and how they can be used with another video to watch. And then an activity for you to label a compass, which you've already practiced before, and an opportunity for you to draw a map of your local area. The second lesson looks at contours, keys and symbols on maps. So Sue Veneer comes back to explain those to you. There's another video helping you to understand further how maps work. There's a quiz for you to take and a map symbols match up activity, which again develops the skills that you were learning previously. So good luck with your geography this week. Your science this week looks like a lot of fun. It's about making balloon rockets and then having races with them. Follow the instructions on the sheet and you'll be able to tie or attach a straw to a balloon, thread it onto a string, which you tie up somewhere either indoors or out, set it going, mark on where it gets to, and see if you can get it to go further. Be interesting to see if adding more air to the balloon makes it go further or not, or do different shapes of balloons behave in different ways? Maybe each person in your family could come up with their own balloon and you can race them on your Balloon Rockets Challenge. For your music this week, we'd like you to consider the concept of texture. Watch the cartoon video to begin with, which will explain to you in more detail what texture within music means. And then sit back and relax while you watch the complete performance by Nitin Sawney of one of his pieces of music he composed called Homelands and just listen out for the layers of texture that he's managed to build into the piece of music. <laughs> So enjoy listening to the piece of music for this week based all around texture. For ICT this week, we're gonna ask you to log back into your Purple Mash account and we're gonna continue with some coding. The first activity is called vehicles and you can see there are four things for you to do. The first one is called make a motorway. Start off by watching the explanation video. So in this challenge, I want you to set the speed of each vehicle to a number between 1 and 10. And when you do this, the vehicles will start moving, just like I've done here. So see if you can do this and complete the challenge. Best of luck. After watching the video, have a go. I'm going to do it now, and you can see. I'm going to choose this vehicle, which looks like a car. I'm going to drag it across to here. I'm going to set the speed. I want the speed to set to, and I think the car can be fairly slow, number three. Uh, the lorry, I'm going to choose the lorry, I'm going to set the speed, and I think the lorry is going to be really slow, so I'm only going to have the lorry on one. Then the buggy comes across, and I'm going to set the speed of the buggy. I think the buggy can be a bit faster. Let's have the buggy going at maybe seven. And finally, the racer. I definitely want the racer to be the fastest, 
So I'm going to set that speed to a maximum of 10. It will go above 10, but the instructions are here. Make the vehicles move at different speeds. Set the speed of each vehicle to a number between 1 and 10. When I'm happy that all my numbers are set between 1 and 10, I click the play button and see what happens. So here you can see that my racer is definitely going the fastest. My buggy is going fairly fast. And look at the poor lorry. It's really crawling along quite slowly. So I've completed that challenge and I can click to go to the next challenge. Work your way through all four challenges for vehicle. The other activity is called turtle. Here you have six activities to complete. The first one also has a video for you to watch and it asks you to move the turtle forward five steps. So watch the video and complete the challenges. For French this week, we'd like you to recap your colours again. Watch the video. And have a go at the colour splats activity. There are three levels of challenge, so you can choose which one you find is right for you. And maybe you could even have a go at inventing your own version of the colour song that you just heard on the video. Or maybe you could make up your own French colour song. The final task for this week, I'm very pleased to launch the Home Learning Independent Project. We know that lots of you are really interested in finding out things about the world. So we've designed for you a three week independent home learning project. It starts with this letter. So have a read through this introduction letter. It explains to you how it's going to work. You've got three options. You can either research a country you can research an animal, or you can research an area of the world, like continents, deserts, oceans, rainforests, volcanoes, rivers, mountains, etc. It's very much down to you to choose what you'd like to do your project about. If your idea doesn't quite fit into one of those three, I'm sure it wouldn't matter. You could choose something that interests you. Spread your work across three weeks. This week, week one, you're going to decide what you're going to research about and come up with some questions. In week two, next week, you're going to do the research and find 10 facts out about your topic and think about what information everyone would like to know about your topic. And in the third week, you've got to think about how you're going to demonstrate the things that you have discovered. So for this week, week one, we have a sheet for you to complete. All you have to do is write down what you have chosen to research and write down a list of questions that you would like to research and save those up ready for next week. So that's it for this week. I hope you have fun working through the activities. Your teachers still love receiving your emails, so do keep sending them through, showing them not only all your work you've been doing, but all the news of things you've been up to at home. Keep safe and well, and I look forward to seeing you next week.